Good morning, YouTube. This is Minister Paul in Northern California. It's October 9, 2012 at 8.40 a.m. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to share with you a vision, a dream, and a warning. Um, two days ago, I was driving back. Uh, actually, it was the day that I did the two-hour video. It was part one and part two on Fight On. I was out getting some things at a store, and as I was leaving, I was trying to prepare what I was going to say uh, in my mind. And as I was driving, I started thinking about these detention centers, and I'm like, I can see how quickly like the world seems to be heading towards us losing our rights and our freedoms and stuff and uh and uh and I'm like, man, I could really see how that could really happen matter of fact <clears throat> there is a remember there is a health care uh detention facility that will be finished in May of two thousand thirteen in Stockton. These aren't just internet rumors there's news stories of them talking about New World Order, martial law, <clears throat> and these detention centers being uh, built right here uh, on the news. Not rumors, but actual credible sources. So anyway, I'm preparing this message on how we fight on. And as I'm driving, I heard, I heard the words, the, exactly like this. I don't add or take away from nothing. It says, Plan A is the only way. And then I heard it again. Plan A is the only way. And, and it was the Lord. And so I, I had this flash. And now I want you to understand whenever I show pictures like this, it's just to give you a visual. The, it's amazing how all I did was put in uh, <clears throat> prison yards, and I can always find the images that are almost identical to what I saw in every dream I've ever seen. <clears throat> I saw these detention centers, and I'll just explain this briefly. They have razor wire like this. Does this look like something that you could climb over? There were there was like there was thousands of people in there. They were outside. In my three previous dreams, this was a vision. I've had dreams of being detained. I've been inside. This was outside. And um, I, I kind of had stopped. I was in a parking lot. I'd pulled over and stopped next to this big rig. It's kind of like a where they park area, a rest area. And I saw this prison area just like this. And I'll show you, kind of, this is what the fence, I just want to show you what the top of the fence looked like. And there was guards out around it with automatic weapons. And the yard was, was like that. It was huge. You see how big that is? That's how tall the fence is. And then picture that with the wire on top. And you could see people in there. And uh, they were fighting. These are just random pictures. This has nothing to, they were fighting. They were mad at each other. They were angry. Some of them were like over here cursing God. Others were over here like threatening each other, you know, to fight. The people over here were mocking. Uh, it was not like what I'd pictured. Uh, <clears throat> like, have you ever seen the movie Left Behind where they're in an underground church praying and planning to get back to heaven and stuff? I'm here to tell you that's hogwash. In my prison, it was not. Uh, in my vision, it was nothing like this. It, they, these people were outside, miserable. There was no presence of God. There was anger. There was the everything that you see right now in the world that's evil, like a, a murderous spirit and a anger, a spirit of anger and a spirit of fear, and people wanting to fight each other. You can amplify that a hundred times. That's what I saw with these people behind these fences. They weren't in there praying like you would, like in the movies. That's a lie. 
from the devil. They were in there cursing God. They had missed the rapture. Uh, and they, 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 were, there was, they were missing. Um, one thing I remember them talking about was that their loved ones weren't there. And they, there was this desperate feeling of they had nothing to lose. It was a horrible feeling. And there was no way out. And even if you did get out and up over this fence, they were going to shoot you anyway. They were they had guards and towers, and they had people patrolling out here with uh, automatic weapons, and they had orders to shoot to kill if you tried to leave. And these people had refused the mark of the beast. So <clears throat> I, I just want to, there's a big anti-rapture movement, uh, as there's all types of movements on YouTube. I'm going to keep putting out the truth. There is a rapture, and it's coming very soon, and it's a blessed hope. It's our assurance. It's the hour that we uh, come in upon us. It's the it's it's a glorious day for us, and we're gonna we're if we uh, start relying on Plan B. That's what a lot of people are teaching. Don't worry if you miss the rapture; you get a second chance uh, in the tribulation. Look. <clears throat> I'm here to tell you, the rapture is the only way. You don't want to rely on Plan B. You want to really, you want to go through this, and and people wanting to kill you. You will be without. Some of your family members will be gone. You'll be separated from your family. Um, you'll be separated from your friends. You'll be in here alone with people that uh, uh, want to hear you with evil spirits, not a holy spirit. Spirits of fear and anger and murder, and it was a horrible, and all of a sudden it, it vanished and I was awake. And Lord told me to, 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 to make a video saying, look, you, you, you don't want to miss the rapture. You don't want to be the unwise virgins. You want to keep your lamps lit. And, and, and October is a very demonic, what do I want to put, a uh, occultic month. And we're going to, so I got a meeting to go to. It's it's one of those meetings you have to go to, but you don't want to. But when I come back, I'm going to do a message on encouragement because we're in perilous times. And, um, and especially during this last quarter of this year, you know, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. I'm not trying to sound negative. I'm trying to get you prepared. You want to prepare for the rapture. You want to treat every day as if it's your last day because this is what is going to happen. And if you think I'm crazy, go read Revelations 13 it, it, and, and, and Matthew 24. He says they will imprison you and, and kill you and that if you don't accept the mark of the beast. Uh, read Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Revelations 13. Th th this should not even be an option. You should not even be shooting for plan B. Your plan A is the only way you should live in, every day uh, for Jesus in obedience to his word. Not just hoping that, you know, if you miss it, you can just catch the second trip out. I'm telling you, that's a, that's a deception. I don't care what YouTube says. I don't care if I get a thousand people attacking me. There's a rapture. It's coming very soon. The people filled with the Holy Spirit can discern it. They're having dreams about it. It's in the air. And I also want to discuss what occurred with me last night out there with my night vision. It's evil. Uh, but so uh, so that's, that's the vision. You don't want to be here. Don't miss the rapture. Here's my dream. Everybody knows I was in the Navy. I've mentioned it enough times by now. Well, I'm on this. Uh, I was on an aircraft carrier uh, in the in the early '80s. I really was, and I was in the Persian Gulf and North Iranian Sea and San Diego and Nicaragua and stuff. Now, this is not my carrier. Again, this is all I did was Google uh, something like a, a aircraft carrier uh, bridge or something. The bridge is at the very top. It's a lookout. This area gives you a 360 degree lookout, and, and this is kind of a, you know, this is actually a rear admiral. But in my dream, briefly, there was a captain, and I was up in this lookout space, which is really odd because when I was in the Navy in real life, 
I was at the bottom of the ship. I was a firefighter. I was an engineer. We were working on boilers, steamers, and stuff like that. So here I am at the top of the ship. Was a, So I, I, I hope for some input on this. Um, this captain, you know, the aircraft carrier I was on in real life held 5,000 men. And so there was no first name basis, and officers didn't really talk to enlisted people. I was just an enlisted nobody at the bottom of the ship. So, so for in my dream, I'm up in the bridge with this captain and about six other people, and I'm standing over here to the left, right? I'll show you. And he's got captain's bars, and he's the captain of the ship. And he looks over at me, and, and, and he knows my name, which on a real ship, for a captain to know 5,000 names would, just wouldn't happen. That's why this dream is substantial. And I was helping him look out. I don't know where we're at. That's the thing. But this is kind of exactly what I saw, what you're looking at. He's, he looks over, and he says to me, he says, well, how do you like it back here again, uh, Paul? And I didn't answer him because I was in shock that a captain, one, knew my name, two, why am I up in his quarter deck area in the bridge, and and, uh, and three, why is he even talking to me? I mean, I'm just being real, right? So I didn't answer him, and this is exact his exact words. He said, trust me, Paul, out here is much safer than Sacramento. I said, what do you mean, sir? He said, where you are at right now is so much safer than being at home, I promise you. And it stunned me. How could it possibly, you know, these things go out there to go to war. That's their job. They're out. These are warships. Do you understand that? <laughs> Some people call them peace ships, but they're designed for war. And so I'm thinking, how could it possibly, when I was in there, seven people died. How uh, how could this possibly be, I think it has something to do with this lookout, being a lookout. But let me know what you think. Maybe uh, something bad was happening at home, but that's not the end of the dream. So, so, I, so I look over and I just kind of turn ahead. I'm thinking, that's pretty crazy to think that this is safer than uh, what's going on at home because I didn't know what was going on at home. And then I look over and there's these six guys. They're standing around this table. This is as close as I could find to it. And they had all these military orders just exactly like these papers. This guy wasn't there. The captain was sitting there and these six guys were sitting there. And I noticed some were talking in Russian, some were talking in Chinese, some were talking in Japanese, and others were talking in uh, uh, Hispanic uh, languages. And um, so it was Russian, Japanese, uh, Hispanic, Russian, Japanese, Hispanic, and English. So... But And I noticed their uniforms were different. And the first thing I did was look at the captain. The, this obviously wasn't him. This is just a rendition that I pulled up. I, I looked at him. I'm thinking, man, if I'm on first name basis with the captain, I want to know why are these guys on this uh, U.S. American vessel? Because, you know, it just, why are, it was almost like, why are foreign troops on a U.S. vessel? Does that make sense? Nothing against foreign troops. I just never had seen it in real life. And I looked over at him, and he turned away, and he gave me that look as if, as if to say, don't ask any questions. So he was done with me. And I just found it odd. And they were getting these orders. These were orders on what their assignment was and what they were to go do. If anybody's been in the military, they know what military orders look like. And I was scrambling through mine, and I leaned over through all of them. I'm, I'm like, excuse me, but none of them spoke English. 
and I'm trying to get to my orders and I seen my name and it had my last name there and I was being deployed somewhere and they were all being deployed to different places. So here's my question. One, why was it safer for me to be on this aircraft carry out at sea than it was at home? Number two, why was I surrounded by foreigners? And number three, why were we all on the same ship getting the same orders from the same person? Peace.